Um, I just want to do a quick demonstration on the Raspberry Pi on the um, configuration of your Wi-Fi and other bits and bobs as well on how to get it set up um, over Wi-Fi rather than having it hardwired to your Ethernet um, cable. Um, get asked this quite a lot actually how easy it is actually to set up over Wi-Fi because a lot of people just have it plugged into their Ethernet cable where their router is as it's in their lounge. Um, it's really easy to be honest. It's all about getting the right Wi-Fi dongle. Um, you know, the, the, the right one, no matter how much it costs, is always easy to set up and get yourself running up and running in no time at all, really. Um, so basically, as you can see on my uh, TV at the moment, I've got the XBMC software running uh, right from my Raspberry Pi. Um, you guys might think it's from an Apple TV. Uh, you're correct, this does run on a jailbreak and Apple TV. Uh, but again, you can get this running on also the Raspberry Pi at a fraction of the cost, basically, for the actual device. So anyway, um, I'm going to take you through the simple steps of actually getting the Wi-Fi enabled over your router so you can use it uh, anywhere in your house um, and stuff like that really. Um, basically, first thing you need to uh, get is the um, USB keyboard. Basically, just go and buy a cheap USB, uh, USB keyboard um, or you might have one floating around your house. Um, you only need it for a couple of seconds to be honest. Uh, because you need to actually go to a place on here to actually enable your Wi-Fi and of course um, uh, until it's enabled you can't use your say your iPad or iPhone as a remote control which I'll show you later on in this video so basically yeah so um, grab yourself a USB keyboard um, so you've got all the bits together the checklist goes as making sure your Wi-Fi dongle is in one of the USB ports the keyboard is in the other USB uh, port. The SD card is inserted onto the uh, Raspberry Pi, and also then making sure your power uh, source is connected as well. Once you've got all those components connected to your Pi, um, switch it on at the mains, um, and then you'll see this pop up. Um, some of the time, you will get up. Uh, well, basically, when you turn it on, you'll get a Raspberry sign, which is basically a, a red R. Um, it will go through its motions of booting up for the first time. Um, I basically leave mine on all the time because it's a very low power consumption. Uh, you actually don't notice it in your uh, electricity bills really. Uh, but if you were to turn it off, basically when you turn it back on, say a day later or uh, two days later on, it will perform um, a run through of your XBMC on here. So. Uh, you'll get some codes thrown at you that are going to be running on your screen. Don't panic. Basically what it's doing, it's going through the whole XBMC build, uh, making sure there's no updates for XBMC as a program itself, and basically just you know doing all, an all-round maintenance sort of thing. So don't be frightened of that. It can take up to 10, 15, or even 20 minutes, depending on your uh, broadband you've got, uh, but it's, it's seriously nothing to worry about at all. So anyway, let's get going. So you've, uh, you've attached your USB keyboard to your Pi uh, and you've got your bits all connected, it's on and you, you get to this part now where you're on your screen. Um, so you want to obviously um, enable this Wi-Fi you've got on your Pi and get it working on your uh, system. So what we need to do is on your uh, USB keyboard is just by using the arrow keys, head over to programs, hit the enter on your keyboard and as you can see you've got Navix Network Manager Raspberry MC settings um, you just basically want the network manager so enter onto the network manager as you can see um, it's brought up two saved Wi-Fi um, connections that I've got on here um, basically uh, when you get yours, you may have one or two already saved on there. But as you can see on the right hand side, you'll have add, disconnect, delete, and status. So we want to obviously go to add, so hit enter on your keyboard. And as you can see, two of my networks have popped up automatically. Basically, uh, most households only have one, so you know, obviously, uh, it would be say the top one. So hit enter on your one, type in your password, which you can use by using the keys now on your keyboard. Once you've done that, Hit enter. So what should we do with enter? Obviously mine's popped up saying I haven't entered anything. But obviously mine's already connected to the internet. So once you've done that, 
you can go down with your arrows and hit cancel. And now you go back to this uh, beginning where it was before, where it actually shows you the saved networks that are on your Pi. So, uh, say for instance, you're going around your mate's house tonight, you want to take your Pi with you to show your mates or you know, watch a movie or something like that. Just basically unplug it at your house, take um, the Pi and the power source. Uh, you won't need your keyboard because I'm going to show you in a minute how to use your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch on how to uh, use it at your remote control. So, you can take it around your mate's house. Plug it all in, you'll go through its setup of um, setting up. Once it's set up, you can go over to here again, type in their password, and it automatically saves on your Pi. So it's a great uh, a great key to have really on the Pi because like myself, I, I kind of tend to take mine around with me when I'm out and about. So once you are on Wi-Fi, um, you're basically ready to uh, ready to go. So you can come again using the arrow keys, you all you want to do is you want to hit cancel. And you want to, on here you want to press the escape key. So basically it takes you back to the actual uh, home menu itself. Um, but like I've said before, um, you really want to make sure that uh, your USB keyboards are attached and your Wi-Fi dongle and your SD card before you power on. I can't stress that enough. Um, a lot of people I know have bought these have always um, always text me saying, oh, my keyboard's not working, on, so I can't go over to set up the Wi-Fi on my home and stuff like that. I said, you've got to make sure it's all plugged in. Make sure it's tightly plugged in before you power on. You don't have to use uh, a keyboard. You can use a mouse as well. So if you've got like a, um, a USB mouse floating around your house, you can use that. Um, but I just find that the uh, actual keyboard is a bit more better because... When you're typing your password, you know, if it's quite a long password, you can just use a key to type in and stuff like that. But whatever you've got, it doesn't matter. So anyway, so now I'm going to show you how to use your iPhone, iPad or your iPod Touch as a remote control. First thing you need to do is head over to the App Store and type in XBMC Remote. It's a free app. Download it. Get it on your springboard. Right, so I'm going to show you how to use it on my mini iPad because I've got it all set up ready to go. So let me just pull the camera down for you guys so you can see. So as you can see down there is my mini iPad. And uh, let's find the actual program which is there, XBMC Remote. Let's hit that up. And now you'll see you come up this screen. And in the top left you'll see it's red, meaning there's no connection to anything in my house. Uh, so we want to get obviously get connected to the Pi. Um, so what you need to do is go down to the bottom right hand corner. You'll see something saying no connection next to the power and you want to hit the no connection XBMC rise from C obviously I've set mine up before so I will recognize that but yours won't you want to go to add host and you will see find XBMC and save obviously you want to go with find XBMC my one's popped up with all the details needed obviously you want to save Obviously now I've got mine both saved on there. So once it's saved, hit the one. As you can see now on the top left hand corner it's turned green, indicating that it's actually connected to your Pi now. And what we want to do now is I uh, you have various you have movies, uh, music, TV shows and pictures and stuff like I basically use mine as a remote control. So the bottom one says remote control. You want to go ahead and hit it. So basically this is a remote control. And believe it or not, uh, you can use it as a remote. Uh, really simple, you've got your up, down, left, right. The XBMC is used for enter. The play and pause, what is this play and pause? You've got your stop button. And uh, another thing is also uh, this one here, the backward arrow, is basically your escape key. So instead of using the escape key on a keyboard like we was how to get out of that program, you would basically use this. Um, really straightforward to use. You know, not really buggy. Uh, there are no issues with it. I say I've got it on my iPhone, and my iPads, um, all work the same, um, and that's it, really, guys. So um, I hope you enjoy the Raspberry Pi as uh, I do here. Um, now you've got it running on your iPhone, iPad. You won't need uh, any of your keyboard or your mouse, but it's always handy to have it uh, around. Um, and that's it, really, guys. I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope you enjoy your Pi.